Hello everyone, welcome to my review of a heavily anticipated shmup release, myself included, which is Crimson Clover World Explosion. You gotta love the English on that title. Sometimes it works out and sounds cool, like Crimson Clover World Ignition, and sometimes it sounds a little bit silly to the English ear, like World Explosion. Maybe Crimson Clover Apocalypse was what they're going for. But in any case, it's still miles better than Ketsui Destiny as far as the titling goes. So it is what it is. Anyway, I, I, it's growing on me a little bit. Crimson Clover World Explosion, for those who do not know, is a re-release of a re-release, which was Crimson Clover World Ignition on the PC. And now it is making its way to the Nintendo Switch. And I have to say, I am very impressed because this isn't a simple, hey, we ported it to the Switch, which I still would appreciate. They also added in an extra range mode, and what's really cool is, well, the range mode is really cool, but I also think it's really cool that they updated the graphics and polished them up, and I appreciate that a lot, and so, yes, I'm very excited about this release, and it is a feather in the hat, or a lucky charm in the cereal bowl, however you say it, for the Nintendo Switch, because right now it is exclusive to this console. I think eventually it'll make its way to the PC, which I know a lot of players will appreciate, but... In the meantime, Switch fans rejoice or whatever because this is the only time and only way you can get it. And I have to say it does run and perform very well on the Switch. And it makes me really happy because as we've seen over the past year or so, interacting with comments, interacting with people on Discord, getting messages from wherever I get messages, Reddit, however I get them. A lot of people are being introduced to the genre of shmups via the Nintendo Switch because it's kind of a nice little hotbed for that type of thing right now and so now right now i think this is the perfect release at the perfect time for the perfect platform because when people say hey i own a nintendo switch i want to get into shmups what shmup should i get the answer is now obvious of course crimson clover world explosion for those who do not know i'm actually a massive fan of this game it's funny as much as i talk about it and reference it i've actually never formally reviewed the World Ignition on the channel, so I guess this will be kind of a double whammy where I can not only talk about World Explosion, but the game itself. Crimson Clover, I ranked it number one of the past decade of shmups, the best shmup release of the 2010s. I think it is one of the best shmups ever made, and it has an absolutely fascinating history. And so we are not getting out of this review without me talking about this history because it's actually, among shmups, Crimson Clover actually tends to get much more coverage and much more attention than typical shmup releases right and so like rolling gunner for example but still one thing that i definitely want to communicate is this game has a very fascinating history that is really unique so crimson clover the original version the dojin version was created by clover tack clover by the way is a whatever amalgamation of cave lover that's what clover stands for for those who don't know so you can see how much cave influenced this game when the guy who created it gets his name from being a cave lover but anyway clover tack for those who do not know isn't just some schmo out there he's actually an extremely talented shmup super player um the dodonpachi series so um there's some amazing footage of him playing sdoj at stunfest and destroying the game there but he also for a lot of people don't know this he's actually i believe a world record holder or former world record holder i may be up behind on this i'll show it on the screen so we can see of Dodon Pachi, you know, my favorite shmup. This guy is a very amazing, talented shmup player among probably some of the best of all time. And so this game was created by a shmup super player. I think that needs to be emphasized because that makes it that makes it really interesting and unique and explains why it is so well made and why it is so close to what you get with a true cave experience because the guy who made it is knee deep, neck deep in the genre, you know, to the bone. So I think a good analogy would be, you know, Street Fighter stops to exist or whatever, and then Daigo Umahara makes the next Street Fighter or to Tokido, someone like that. Like a player that's invested probably thousands and thousands of hours into the genre and really honing in the game and being extremely talented. He didn't need a, you know, play tester. The dude could play test the game himself being as talented as he is. So. I just always want to point that out because a lot of people don't know that, that Clover Tack is the creator of Crimson Clover. So you get a world-class player creating a world-class shmup. I mean, what could be better? So yes, Crimson Clover was originally released as just a doujin release, I believe, on PC back in the day in 2010 era. 
And then it got a arcade release on the Nessica. I don't know if it was World Ignition at that point or if it was still Crimson Clover. But it got a release in the arcade via the title Nesca, which is really cool. And that makes sense because if you're a competitive shmup player in Japan, like it's all about the arcade. Getting your game in the arcade, you know, that's an extra badge of honor, or that seal of approval. So it makes the game also feel much more aligned to, again, like an official cave release and stuff because it has an arcade history. It has super players and stuff getting their hands on it. It's very well known by the you know, the cave playing community in Japan. And then it was released on Steam as Crimson Clover World Ignition, which is an absolutely fantastic release. However, not flawless in some aspects. And so coming into this re review of World Explosion, I not only wanted to look into, hey, did they, uh, you know, get this on the Switch and does it run well on the Switch? But I'm also s interested to see if some of the issues of World Ignition, which are technical issues, not gameplay issues, are addressed in World Explosion when it comes to the PC because they're not cropping up on the Nintendo Switch. So the main things I was keeping an eye out for is World Ignition on the PC. I don't know if they've patched this not or or they haven't. Um, it's been a while since I experienced it, but Crimson Clover World Ignition had this weird memory leak in it where if you played the game for too long, uh, the, the frame rate, no matter how strong your PC would be, would like chop down to like 10 frames a second and it'd be crazy and you had to actually reboot your computer. Um, so yeah, nothing like that's cropping up. And so one thing that I was really concerned about when I was picking up World Explosion for the Nintendo Switch specifically is how optimized this release is for the Switch because other Switch games that are really highly intensive, like Don Maku to 3, which is intensive on the PC, granted, actually does not run fully well on the Switch at higher difficulties. Like you have to drop that resolution down really low. so. Otherwise, you'll get like actual hardware slowdown, which wasn't intended. So I was really concerned about that coming into the Switch port. Does this port hold its frame rate, especially with all the craziness coming on on screen and the graphical intensity of this game? And also, I was concerned about the input lag, right? Um, so the Nintendo Switch is a laggier console than you know PC generally or PS4. Most games have an extra frame of lag. It's hard to get around. Some don't. Some have just half a frame extra. It just depends on how well they do it and your control setup. But Crimson Clover World Ignition on the PC is slightly laggier than the typical PC shmup release. It's not heavily laggy, but it's slightly, a little bit more. Um, it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference when you're playing on the PC, but my concern was is this going to be compounded when you release it on the Switch? Is this going to be a laggy release? So my biggest concerns for this release wasn't actually the game itself because, like I said, Crimson Clover, World Ignition, now World Explosion is one of the best shmups ever made. Was The question was, can the hardware deliver the experience? And I'm very happy to report that I was genuinely very impressed by how well this game ran on the Nintendo Switch on a technical level. So for those who don't really like how I get into the technical side of things, Rest assured that at least you'll know that this game runs well technically on the Switch. I have a little frame rate monitor I was just playing. It never dropped 60 FPS. It held it. That was impressive. And also the input lag feels equivalent to what you're getting on PC. It's a little bit hard to tell because my Nintendo Switch input uh, arcade stick is actually probably going to be more responsive than most of everyone else's because I did that crazy pad hack to kind of cut half a frame down. but. Even still, it felt very equivalent to playing it on the PC. So the input lag, the frame rate are solid. That was a big relief. And then also, it also includes all the really cool UI elements from the PC release. I was concerned about that, if they would simplify that down for sake of convenience. But no, it has the adjustable screen. It has So if you want to play it like crazy screen orientations and stretches and, you know, whatever, you can do that has the training mode has all the stuff from world ignition extremely solid so let's talk about what world explosion brings to the table that's extra the first thing is that there is a big graphical update from world ignition so for those who kind of maybe not spend a lot of time with world ignition this won't be super obvious but for someone who's talked about the graphics and uh world ignition and the original release i'd say overall the graphical quality of Crimson Clover is absolutely fantastic. It feels, you know, cave level quality. Like this could be, again, a cave game, right? The only issue that was 
prevalent in World Ignition. Actually, Batowing talked about this as well, and he is a shmup graphical designer. He said that the textures for World Ignition's, uh, you know, sprites and everything, or whatever they are, were a little bit noisy, and I definitely agreed with that. There's like a little bit of a graininess to some of the, like, textures, like the backgrounds. There's like this little grain quality to it, he talked about. And from what I can tell playing World Explosion, I think that was addressed a little bit more. The, the textures look a little bit cleaner. They look more a little more polished. And of course, I love the extra ship colors. You have um, just the UI looks better. So it, it's a big improvement there visually on top of a game that's already visually really well done. So this re-release -re is definitely an essential pickup just because all the improvements it brings. So let's talk about Crimson Clover in general, and then we'll talk about the extra arrange because that's going to be the other big thing people want to get this game for. So Crimson Clover, this again is a carryover from World Ignition, is extremely feature rich. It has all the stuff that I'm looking for. It has a training mode, it has the configurable stuff I talked about, it has all these extra like boost mode, it has extra difficulties, the original arcade which is pretty challenging, and then it has unlimited mode which is you know like lunatic mode in a Toho game. It's crazy difficult and so the game is able to really seamlessly fit all skill levels and so if you're a newer player and you pick up crimson clover and you're looking into getting into shmups there is no shame playing the novice mode because it's a very well done novice mode where it's challenging but it's not overly challenging but it's also not patronizing you know i feel like some of the m2 super easy might be a little bit too easy you know it's a little bit too patronizing i think the novice mode in crimson clover is one of the best novice modes around so if you're looking to get into the genre it's a great place and also if you're just wanting to learn the scoring a little bit with a little bit more breathing room i actually did that at first novice mode's really good for that and there's also the great training mode so if you want to practice bosses you want to practice very specific conditions like oh the rank needs to be this high my star count needs to be this high my hyper meter needs to be this high it's got you covered very and again i think this also comes from clover being a super player where he knows what players are looking for right because he does that himself and so another thing i want to talk about with crimson clover is just kind of how it feels compared to the cave library because it's definitely i would consider it kind of like a spiritual successor to caves games and i think the game that you know is obvious to point out is sdoj clover himself being an sdoj player you can tell there's a lot of influences from sdoj but i honestly feel like crimson clover is better than sdoj that's my opinion um as a game but also what's cool about it is with the lock-on system and the way the scoring works it's kind of like this interesting hybrid between a dodonpachi especially a later dodonpachi game and Ketsui too. For, so if you're a fan of Ketsui and you've been looking for kind of a continuation of that game design, which is pretty unique, I feel like Crimson Clover is going to be the closest you're going to come to like a cave sequel, at least for right now. So I guess there's the cave uh, mode in DFK, but or the Ketsui mode in DFK. But other than that, I think Crimson Clover kind of finds a middle ground there that's really, really cool, really, really interesting. And of course, you got to love the double hypers and how wild this game can get with its gameplay. So let's talk about what it brings with the new arrange, which is, um, I don't, can't remember what it's called, but the arrange mode or whatever it is. So it's actually much, it actually is more unique than I was expecting. I was kind of just expecting it kind of be like destiny mode or something like that, where it'd just be more hypers, I guess just more Crimson Clover, but no. It actually borrows a power, the power-up system from Gradius, and it almost feels a little bit like Garega too, because of the way you can do your different option formations and stuff like that. And so I actually had a ton of fun playing this arranged mode. The scoring is very complicated, to say the least, um, but I had a lot of fun playing it out, and I, there are some things I wanted to point out, some bits of advice I want to give. The first is that... Um, Homing, if you're going for survival, those homing options are really powerful. And also, unfortunately, my favorite ship type, Type Z, is not available. Type Z, for those who do not know, is one of the most OP ships in the game where it's super fast and also has a wide shot. But the thing about uh, the arrange mode is you can actually manually speed up. So you can kind of create a pseudo Type Z by just speeding up using speed up. 
Um, and then you get a, a, a shield you can gain. So it actually has a lot of influences from like a Gradius, like a more traditional type of shmup, you know, with like power-ups and weapons and stuff. So people who are looking for that, you know, I think the arranged mode is definitely going to scratch that itch for you. Difficulty-wise, it is a little bit easier than the original arcade, but harder than novice. So it's a nice middle ground between there as well. So if you're looking to improve at the game, maybe a nice uh, path for you would be let's play original mode, let's play range, and then move up to our arcade. And then maybe you can play unlimited range and then play unlimited arcade or something like that. Um, yes. What's funny though is with the visuals, it just ramps it up to the next level as far as the screen is getting completely ripped apart by explosions and super satisfying deaths and item collects. I mean, Crimson Clover takes this concept that I've always been talking about when people are designing shmups to make the kills visceral, to make them rewarding, and dials it up to max level to where it is pure insanity in the best possible ways. So. I really cannot recommend this game enough. It's got everything you're looking for. It also has a great replay system. I forgot to mention that. That's actually what you're watching here and how I got the footage because on the Switch, right? Like capturing Switch footage in handheld mode, that's not going to happen. So the, I think more Switch releases need to have replay systems specifically because otherwise your handheld mode gameplay is just practice, right? Because you can't really capture your runs and stuff like that. So it has a great replay mode has the online stuff it's got the training mode it's got it is so feature rich it's kind of ridiculous how many modes and features it has how many difficulties you can play it in how many it's it's crazy it's absolutely worth the money 20 bucks that's a very solid price point i think it's kind of interesting what will happen with the pc release because for those who do not know dejica we're kind of doing this thing where they're basically selling crimson clover world ignition at insanely low prices like i remember buying like five copies for like two dollars a piece one time for a giveaway it's regularly like five dollars and lower so it'll be interesting to see what they do with the world explosion release on the pc if they sort of stabilize that and make it a little bit higher or if it, you're going to get it for three dollars on the pc at some point i have no idea but absolutely a huge recommend playing it on the switch it's got everything you're looking for. I can't say enough about it. And so I'll just end this video by asking you to subscribe and all that good stuff and thanking my patrons. So thank you to Dingo, Handicap, Anthony A, Ben Wynn, Borgi22, Corio, Disco Star Slayer, Eric H, Full Set, Retro Schmupper, How Su, Kiwi, JLab, JB, RPG, Joe Angelo, Game Boy Guru, K, Malaise, Mark Tom, Smart World, Maz, Mayher, Calendrian, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron, Okla Kugels, Philip Mason, who just subbed right as I was recording this, so shoutouts are sneaking right in there. Ram Q, Raul, Smacky Factor, Sugumo, Yutukaya, and Plasma. Thanks for watching.